Hi, I'm Justine Louise. Welcome to my channel. So today I am talking about the Kruger National Park and going on safari there. Now I'm doing a five part mini series and I'm going to be expanding on a whole bunch of different topics because this is a huge topic and I just thought I would break it all up. So today's video is actually part three of five and this is on what you should pack for a Kruger Park safari. Now I'm speaking as an international visitor but I'm sure the same would go even if you were local. Um, so first of all, I just want to give you a little bit of background on myself and my husband. Uh, we, My husband is from South Africa and when we first got married he told me all about the Kruger Park um, because he used to go there as a family holiday, kind of like North Americans go to Disney. His family went to the Kruger Park on safari. And when he told me about that, being a huge animal lover, I thought, oh my goodness, I would love to do that. So he said, well, why don't we do it? So we decided to book it as a trip of a lifetime bucket list kind of thing. And what started off as a bucket list, our trip of a lifetime turned into a annual trip. So we are so fortunate that we are able to go on a regular basis. And we are actually going there next month in February. So this is all fresh in my mind. So I thought this was a perfect time to post this video. We, every time we mention that we're going on safari to the Kruger Park, we get so many questions because this seems to be a bucket list um, type of trip and so many people want as much information as possible, especially North Americans because it's such a far away place and it's so far out of our comfort zone and we don't really know much about it. So people have so many questions for us. So my husband and I tried to come up with a list of things that we normally get asked and I'm trying to do um, videos on each one of those topics in hopes that I can pass along some information to other people who are thinking about going on a safari and specifically to the Kruger Park. So as I mentioned, this one is on packing tips. Now we've been many times and I've kind of learned along the way what you need and what you don't need and I'm hoping that maybe this can be um, passed on to you. So the first thing is um, things that you need uh, from the doctor, inoculations. Uh, the first year we went, we went to a travel doctor and he gave us a list this long of all the inoculations we needed. We were poked and jabbed and my husband said to me, I lived in South Africa and I didn't have all these injections. Um, there isn't anything there, yellow fever or anything like that. I know there are in some of the other um, game reserves that you need to have those done. Um, the only thing um, that is a worry there is malaria. And I have heard of people that have had malaria, not visitors, but people who live in the park and things like that. So it is a worry. Um, so the first few years we took um, malaria pills, but our doctor also told us, even though we're taking these pills, you can still get malaria. And it actually is worse because the pills will mask the symptoms. So I was thinking, okay, well, that doesn't sound very good. Then we took the pills, and they're very, very expensive. I think they were about $10 each. Not that I'm questioning price on pills and health and safety, um, but they were very expensive because we go for a month. So I'm also taking these heavy duty pills for a month, um, which I'm not crazy about. And I had a lot of side effects. The biggest one was having um, paranoia and crazy dreams. So I would have these nightmares and wake up in a sweat and it was just horrible. And I said to my husband, you know what, that's it. I'm not taking these anymore. Um, now I know that's not good advice to give to you. I'm just giving you my experience and what we've experienced taking these pills. He had the same issues and we weren't having a good night's sleep. So we just both decided we are just going to make sure that at dusk and dawn when the mosquitoes are out is to wear DEET um, repellent. Anytime we are outside, even inside our room, we burn citronella candles that you can buy in the gift store as well as grocery stores in the area. We spray ourselves with off and we always make sure our, our bodies are covered in dark clothing in the evenings. We don't often go out at night because we do early morning game drives at 4 a.m. So we're not really up very late anyways. But um, just so you know, that is what we do. Um, we have bought um, mosquito nets and we 
they don't really have a way for you to set them up. So we brought them from home and set them up. But we didn't really have any mosquitoes in our room. As I mentioned, we burned the little um, mosquito coil and citronella candles in our room and have repellent and things like that. So we've never had issues. I've had one or two mosquito bites and yeah, I get a little bit worried when I've had them. But in the 10 plus years I've gone, um, I've never had an issue. And like I said, I've probably had two mosquito bites in the 10 years because we're very um, careful about um, repellent and things like that. So I'm just giving you that information. Take it with a grain of salt. Always speak to your healthcare provider and make your own decisions. But I'm just passing that along. We always take with us, um, it's a leather man, which like a Swiss Army knife kind of tool, um, because we take it on every trip, but more so in the Kruger Park because a lot of the rooms tend to be um, not maintained, let's say. <laughs> um, let's just leave it at that. Um, we've had so many issues where things are broken in our room and my husband, I call him MacGyver, he fixes and jimmies lots of things for us and that leather man has been so helpful to us. Um, I can't even think of all the crazy things that he's had to fix and sort out for us and he's often used that Leatherman tool. So I recommend taking those on any trip. So we've had to use it in hotel rooms in Las Vegas. So, and they're maintained um, beautifully, but it's just a, a very handy piece of equipment to have. And especially in the Kruger where they don't have a lot of supplies available and things to fix things. So uh, definitely have one of those in your um, pack. Just so you know, there's no phones in the rooms. Um, a lot of people expect when you stay in a hotel, though this isn't a hotel, um, the camps don't have phones. So if you have your own cell phone, if you have an unlocked phone, um, you can use that. And there are pay phones at a lot of the camps if you need to call home or make any calls. Um, they're often out of order. so. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Um, years and years and years ago when we first went, we had no way to communicate with family. There was no Wi-Fi or cell signal. So we went there and we had to not keep in touch with family. That was really, really difficult, especially with animals at home and I like to keep in touch. Now I actually have a webcam on my animals at home and I can watch that while I'm in the Kruger. So um, things have definitely changed. So it has evolved a lot. But just so you know, if you're expecting um, to stay in touch with home, although most people now use um, unlock cell phones and just buy some card. But just thought I would mention that because you, some people may expect that there would be phones in the room or pay phones and things like that, but there isn't. Now back to the SIM card. Um, we buy ours at the Johannesburg Airport. Um, it's just much easier and it's right there at the airport. And we actually used to have a device that was called a MiFi, which is kind of a hotspot and we would travel and use that. Um, there is only cell signal in the camp main camps. There's nothing on the roads when you're out, so you can only get um, signal inside the camps and some of the camps are worse than others just so you know. Um, the main big ones like Skakuza and things like that we've never had an issue but as the more north you go um, they don't have as many amenities and as much cell service up there so you may not have access to internet or um, cell so just keep that in mind. Um, might be a bit better I haven't been there for two years we actually missed a year this last year um, so it might be a bit better every year it seems to get a little bit better but just so you know um, that's probably your best option is in your cell phone unlocked with a sim card and as I mentioned we got it from Johannesburg um, they don't have stores inside the camps where they you can buy things like that so I would definitely arrange to have that organized before you get into the camp or at the little shops that are just outside of the Kruger Park um, there's an MT, MTN or MTN um, and a Vodacom those are two of the main um, service providers so we always organize that before we get in now, my husband says I'm being so fussy, but I can't help it. I'm a bit of a princess. Um, the room will come with one towel each, and it's pretty threadbare. <laughs> so I bring towels from home. Like, what can I say? I even bring like a turby towel because I always have to have a towel for my hair. There's no face cloths. 
it there's no toiletries they give you one little round bar of soap each and one towel um, you do get new ones every day not soap but new towels so I always bring things like that from home as well as beach towels because there are pools at a lot of the camps and they don't provide towels so if you want to use your towel that you've used for your shower you're gonna to have to take that so just um, a beach towel is really really handy um, for the pool and if you're fussy like me and want a hand towel and a hair towel and a face cloth you need to bring those as well and again my husband thinks I'm nuts but I thought I would mention it another thing is if you're staying in a room that has a kitchenette they do provide um, very basics they'll have for as many people are staying in the room they'll have like two plates two forks, two knives, two cups, um, coffee cups. There's usually kettles. I usually bring my own kettle. Um, many times the kettles have um, scaling in them and they're old and wrecked and I just prefer to bring my own kettle. Um, you can even buy them at the gift store and you can buy them at the grocery stores outside of the camps and they're not, I just buy a cheap plastic one. And um, when we leave, I leave it behind for the last cleaning lady and they're usually quite thrilled with that. So um, they're just really handy and inexpensive and I just prefer using my own. Anyway, if I'm a princess, what can I say? And same with um, the kitchen supplies. <laughs> I'm just so finicky. Um, I don't like using wooden spoons that other people have used and that's usually what is left there for you. So I bring from home lightweight silicone. I just go to the dollar store and buy light um, items. And again, I leave them for the cleaning staff on the last day and they're thrilled because then they get all these new goodies for their own kitchens. Um, so yeah, I like to bring a lot of my own stuff. I like to bring Tupperware and things like that from home. Um, like I said, I'm a bit of a princess. I also bring a really neat cutlery set that I got at Mountain Equipment Co-op because I like to just use my own cutlery. Again, uh, it's just my own preference. We also bring our own coffee cups from home because we like big mugs and I have these big plastic travel mugs that we really enjoy to take. So those are other um, things. You don't have to take them, um, but I personally like that. And if you're a bit of a princess and things like that give you the creeps, then I would bring that. Um, I also bring basically a medicine cabinet from home. Um, two reasons. They don't have a lot of things in the gift store if you have a problem. I mean, if you get a cold, if you sore throat, headache, um, they probably have the basics of that, but there are a lot of brands that I'm not familiar with and drugs I'm not familiar with. So for me, I'd just rather take what I know works for me, like gravel from home, Tylenol or Advil or whatever you know works. NyQuil, I always bring things like for a cold or a sore throat and things because you just never know if you're feeling under the weather and if you don't have access to buy these things, it's a, a big problem because they don't have a proper pharmacy. It's just very, very basics. Um, they might have headache tablets and maybe one cough syrup. I'm not sure. But anyway, it definitely doesn't hurt to bring your own things from home and they're, they're very hard to come by in the camp. So it's better safe to be sorry. Same with toiletries. Um, as I mentioned, you, in the room you'll get one little bar of soap, so make sure you have everything from home that you need. And in the gift store, they do have a few things if you're in a pinch. Um, they might have one shampoo, one type of soap, um, maybe one type of toothpaste. So if you're really particular about a certain brand or a product, make sure you have it. Um, or if you forgot it from home, you're in a bit of trouble. Uh, a little bit of a backstory here. Um, our luggage went missing and we arrived at the park with no luggage and my husband said I do not know how um, Johannesburg because we landed in Johannesburg then flew into the park and he said there's no way we're going to get our luggage from Johannesburg we're in the middle of the bush in the middle of nowhere and I arrived in a wool sweater long pants Ugg boots and I had nothing I didn't even have toothpaste so I was in a bit of a state and the gift store doesn't have clothes they have like gift store types of clothing like Kruger Park t-shirts and things like that but they don't they in the later years they've started selling a little bit more fashion items um, but back then that was the pretty much it so I was in tears <laughs> as you, I'm sure you can imagine I didn't have a bathing suit I didn't have anything so that's one thing in future I always pack one of everything in my carry-on flip-flops bathing suit shorts top just in case um, your luggage was missing because that was a disaster anyway 
it did arrive that same day. I, I cannot believe it. We arrived in our room and then tap, tap, tap. Um, this guy had driven all the way from Johannesburg, which is about six hours to deliver our suitcase. So anyway, um, I always pack those um, little items because you cannot find everyday items in the gift store. Um, but I guess that goes without saying on any trip you go, you can arrive in somewhere and your luggage doesn't arrive. But usually there are stores that you can buy things, but not so much in the Kruger Park. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then clothing. I love wearing Lululemon gear. Um, it's basically like technical sportswear. Um, it's comfortable, it's cool, it's moisture wicking. Um, it gets very, very hot. Um, we've had it at 48 degrees, which is unbearably hot. Our car has air conditioning and our room has air conditioning, but from A to B and walking around, it does get very, very hot. Uh, cool, casual, comfortable clothing is what I would recommend. You don't need a safari hat and a canteen around your neck and look like Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Just wear what you're comfortable. I've been told um, that animals like the neutral colors and don't like to come near anyone when you're wearing bright neons, but I've worn neon colors and we've seen millions of wonderful animals. So I don't know if there's any truth behind that. Although that being said, they do say the cooler um, or earth tones don't attract mosquitoes. So anyway, um, I'm not too fussy about colors. I just go with what mood I'm in and what I feel like wearing. I would take layers. Um, the mornings can be a little bit cool. So I always wear a tank top with a long sleeve and maybe a bit of a cardigan and take off layers as the day goes on. We've also been there when it is freezing. Um, it is the desert, so the mornings are ice, ice cold. And we went in May and it was freezing. So I actually wore a little toque, um, gloves. I had a thick um, hoodie on and I was frozen. So I would just take lots and lots of layers and cool, comfortable, casual. There's no um, fine dining unless you're staying at a luxury lodge. So I basically wear, um, I have a pair of pool flip-flops, like the little rubbery plastic ones. I usually take a pair of Birkenstocks because they're comfortable to walk around in. And then a little pair of runners, sneaker kind of things if you want to do some walking around. And that's about the gist of that. I also bring a raincoat, like a shell, because uh, you do sometimes get some rain, um, but you don't need anything super, super warm if you're going during the summer season. Um, yeah, I would pretty much say that um, we've brought jeans and things, but you don't really need them. And again, there's no formal dress up dinner kind of thing. So just whatever you're comfortable um, wearing and for sitting for long periods of time when you're going on game drives. And also, of course, a bathing suit because there are um, pools at lots of the camps. So if you want to cool down or do some sun tanning, you want a bathing suit. Um, technology. So we always bring a power bar so we can plug in all our things. My husband takes a fancy camera with him and um, binoculars that need um, plugging in. So I would always take a camera with a good zoom. Um, you see the animals, but you're only allowed to stay on the road. You can't go off-road. So you can see this wonderful, majestic, spectacular lion, but he's way over there. So I always make sure I bring a zoom camera so you can get close up. Same with all these beautiful birds and things. So you can get nice and close, um, with your camera. Um, so I mentioned we brought a power bar. I also always bring, um, many travel adapter plugs. Same with um, USB cables and your um, to charge up your phone in that. I always bring at least two, and this is from experience. Um, one who, the rooms we stayed in, my husband forgot the plug in the wall that was the adapter, and we didn't have an extra plug. And a lot of the gift stores, they sometimes sell a few things, but not much. So again, try and bring everything from home and don't rely on the stores. Same with batteries all that kind of stuff. They just have very, very basic stuff and nine times out of 10, they're not gonna have what you're looking for. So please bring duplicates of everything. One year, my um, lightning charger broke and I don't know what I would have done. My husband just by fluke had brought an extra one because there's no way I could have bought um, a lightning cable in South Africa. At that time, they didn't have the same charging as us. As North America so I wouldn't have been able to charge my phone for the rest of the holiday so that would have been a disaster so 
bring all your cables from home and when in doubt bring two and same with the plugs for the wall because they don't always have extras. <laughs> I always bring stuff for my car. Um, we like to pack um, what's called in South Africa as puck course. <laughs> I don't know what I think the translation is kind of like a picnic bag and we have snacks in our car. We like to drive around. I like to eat rusks and um, nuts and I bring my own little thermos of oatmeal and I have that in the morning. My husband likes to sit by the watering hole and eat his bowl of cereal and it's just really really fun. So we bring a cooler bag. I bring mine from home because I have a really nice one that I got from Costco and it's super lightweight. It's a Rachel Ray big bag and I pack all our snacks and things for the car. I also bring from home um, travel thermos mugs. We like to drink coffee in the morning and um, it's just a nice little thing that we like to do in the car so I like to bring those from home. They do sometimes sell them in the camp but they're more um, as gifts to take home so they're a little bit pricey so I just bring ones from home and I just find that much easier. Um, I, as I mentioned for the um, kitchen I bring my own Tupperware and Ziploc bags and that kind of stuff. You can buy them um, in the camps, but they're expensive and they have very limited selection. So if you're really picky about that kind of stuff, I bring a lot of those kind of things from home. Um, I just prefer my own comforts. <laughs> and as I mentioned, I bring a zoom camera and my husband likes to bring binoculars. I don't really bring binoculars. I did the first year, but my philosophy now is if it so far away I have to look at it with binoculars and I'm not really interested because many times I've had animals just walking right past my car and I'm kind of greedy like that so I can't be bothered and they're quite big and take up a lot of room in my case and something more for me to worry about so I would just rather just watch the animals myself visually. Um, one year we brought chairs for the pool just so you know the pool is a pool a hole in the ground with water and there's nothing else there. <laughs> There's no seating, no table. There's sometimes an old bench sitting there, but usually people are sitting on it. So we brought these little MEC chairs from home, like beach chairs. Um, depends how heavy our cases are, we might bring things like that. So anyway, it's just a nice idea if you want a nice little chair to sit at at the pool, just so you know, there's no chairs. And we also bring flashlights. I also bring a headlamp. I like that because my hands are full in the morning. And like I said, we get um, to the gate at 4 a.m. So it's pitch black and I'm walking to the car and I don't want to step on anything or just see the path or see my way. And um, my hands then are free to carry my tea and my camera and all the things that I'm taking in the car that morning. So I like to be hands free and my husband also has a flashlight so we can see and navigate our way. Plus what we do when we're sitting at the gate, we park our car and we sometimes get out of the car and kind of walk around and we have the flashlight and we kind of look in the bush to see if there's anything there on the other side of the electric fence because sometimes you can hear the animals and you're wondering where they are. So anyway, that's what we like to take. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you on what to pack and hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comments below. I hope I touched on everything but I'm sure I've missed a few things and as I mentioned I am doing a five-part mini series so there's lots of topics I'm going to be covering so if you're interested take a look at some of my other videos. So I hope you enjoyed it and if you do please click like and if you want to see more travel related items please hit subscribe and the notification bell so you keep up to date. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!